Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. All right, those are our top stories. Let's get started with answering all your stock queries. Mayuresh Joshi and Rajat Bose are our two experts this afternoon. Gentlemen, good afternoon to both of you. Our first query comes in uh, from Monarch Shah, who's on the line with us from Pune. Hi, Monarch. How can we help you? Yeah, I'm holding. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. I'm holding. Uh, I'm holding an ICC Prudential Life Insurance stock mm -hmm. since IPO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the rate of 334. Mm. So, wanted to know the long term perspective. Mm. As, like, uh, yesterday's announcement regarding the results of the company. Right. It was not, it was not as good yeah. as uh, the company. Uh, yeah, it was a tad on the weaker side, actually. So, I can understand yeah. that as an investor, you might be worried as to whether or yeah. not you should remain invested. Mayuresh, uh, your thoughts, uh, you know, for somebody who's bought in at the IPO, is there reason to remain invested at least for a few years? Afternoon, Sumera. Oh, I think that is and that should be the case. Uh, again, on the numbers front, uh, a tad bit disappointing, but one should uh, realize and understand that the base that you're probably working on on a YOI comparison uh, had the demonetization effect. Uh, and the GST effect. So I think a large element in terms of uh, four to six quarters uh, prior to this number, I think a lot of inflows probably came in to the insurance sector as well. But I think uh, the general numbers itself, uh, the protection business has grown to 8%. Uh, what you're also stocking in terms of the expected uh, persistency ratios and the persistency curve uh, across time horizons, I think that is showing improvement. The solvency ratios are very, very solid for the company. The value of new business margins have probably expanded to 17.5% uh, on the premise of the protection business actually moving higher. And the ULIPS and the contribution in terms of the retail annualized premium equivalents uh, is still higher and ULIPS still account for 80 odd percent. Uh, I think the increasing product mix and the tilt towards high margin businesses uh, supports uh, the VNB margins actually expanding further. So again, the base case here is uh, that the annualized premium equivalent uh, earnings growth related story still continues. The APEs should grow at a very decent clip going forward as well. And from a valuation perspective also, it trades around 2.5 times uh, on an uh, embedded value basis. Uh, so I think the growth prospects probably is there for the company over the medium to long term. So the suggestion to the investor is to clearly hold on to the stock. All right, Monarch, the suggestion for you is to hold on to the stock. Meanwhile, just keep an eye out on Wellspun Enterprises increasing as we speak at the high point of the day. Uh, good results. And remember, the stock is off its 52-week high as well at lower levels was supported by some promoter purchase. Over the last three quarters, the promoter stake in the company has gone higher from 44.56% to 44.59%. And now it stands at 46.26%. So interesting numbers there. Stock off the record highs. Good results moves higher as we speak. Uh, but we have another caller. Mr. Nagesh Burugu calls us from Hyderabad with a query. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Nagesh. Uh, yeah, I hold 200 shares of Kotak Mahindra Bank. I purchased uh, for a long-term view. But when I've seen this HDFC bank, they have a very good dividend payout. And I know both the banks are very good in their loan book. Should I retain to Kotak Mahindra Bank or should I switch to HDFC Bank? All right, Mr. Nagesh, I will have to ask you to hold on to that thought for a bit because meanwhile we're getting the Jubilant Foodworks uh, press release out there. The same store sales growth is the one which is reported. And we have the same store sales growth at 25.9%. Wow. Well, uh, last quarter we thought 26.5% was a six-year high. Cannot do the best. And right now we were working with 18 to 20%. But the same store sales growth for Jubilant Foodwork, that stock should actually come up for you. 25.9%, that is above the most high, uh, the, the, again, highest the highest estimate, estimate on the street. Because we were the broadest, broader range was at the, on the lower end, 15%. Higher range was about 22%. Most of the ranges were, or most of the estimates were concentrated between 18 to 20 percent and now we have same store sales growth at 25.9 percent and uh, the stock now has taken off and is currently at a record high add to that we have a couple of other things the management commentary national rollout of everyday value on regular pizzas helped strong presence in t20 cricket sponsorship of royal challengers bangalore as well as sporting events are the ones that help them they opened 13 stores of Domino's, closed third store uh, three stores so that is something we'll have to watch out for because in the previous conference call the management had 
had said that they are looking to ramp up their increase in the opening of domino stores so that is something the street will be watching out for the timeline on how domino stores open this year dunkin donuts one store is opened one is closed total store count stands at 37% but the headline here same store sales growth at 25.9% beats the highest okay. estimate on the street yeah that's true actually so good going for jubilant food i think they've just brightened up uh, the investors life. looks like someone's eating a lot of pizza <laughs> i don't someone's know who eating a lot of pizza yeah all right so uh, well, let's get back to answering our query then the question uh, that mr nagesh burugu had asked was on kodak mahindra bank um rajat let me come to you first on that technically uh, uh, does kodak look to have bottomed out what's your take on kodak for somebody who's invested in it um, i think he bought it at what 1200 odd levels what's your advice so well, i would say that uh, this stock is actually on a correction mode and the correction uh, is only a short term correction i, I would say that until it falls below say uh, the support range between 1290 and 1267 i don't think there would be any cause for worry on the contrary kotak mahindra bank can easily bounce back and once it takes out 1360 again uh, on a rebound it would uh, regain the old momentum that it had so i personally would vote for uh, retaining kotak mahindra bank even though uh hdfc bank may be better on certain parameters but uh mm. kotak mahindra bank is also very good so if i were in his shoes i would definitely retain all right if you were in his shoes you would definitely retain so mr murugu i hope that answers your question meanwhile sumera not only are some of people eating lot of pizzas but i just take a look at the number of mobile app downloads this is a data point that a lot of the analysts watch out for one and a half million more mobile apps have been downloaded over the last one year and the average contribution to delivery sales has increased from 51% to 65%. Remember, delivery sales are a little more profitable for someone like a Jubilant Food or any restaurant because they do not have to spend extra on the setup of that restaurant and uh, uh, operating leverage wise delivery higher delivery means higher margins. So uh, we we're, we're, we're seeing an improvement in their delivery sales and uh, most of them coming by via mobiles that is again a low employee cost uh, business and looks good a lot of people are ordering pizzas on mobiles and are downloading their apps too all right so anyway you cut it people want their pizza anyway you cut it yeah <laughs> all right sneha sinha has written to us um, she writes to us from punjab she holds 173 shares in asian paints uh which she bought at about 510 rupees um she bought it i think what two two and a half years ago she's a long term investor and wants to know what she should do um uh, irish your uh, take on asian paints numbers look good this time around for somebody who has been a long term investor already and wants to remain invested uh, is that the way to go Well, it should be and i think the power of compound is obviously working for the investor and i was hearing mangalam out yesterday pose the numbers uh, on your channel itself and the phenomenal growth uh, that asian paints is reflected in volume terms uh, which is again got reflected in terms of the leverage that they have taken because of the price hikes onto their beta margins uh, at 19.9% uh, i think that probably stood out for the quarter uh, the management has reiterated that in post cost inflation might take a hit in terms of ebitda margins uh, but the ability to pass this on in terms of discretionary demand expected to come back very very strongly in the second half and being a market leader again within the uh, paint industry and the decorative space itself uh, i think that should hold up the earnings for the company the cut in gst rates uh, from 28 to 18% i think the unorganized sector which is almost 25 30% of the industry as a whole i think a part of the business should gradually start shifting towards larger organized players uh, like asian paints and the expansion again into tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, and the repainting demand expected to come back very very strongly because of msp hikes and the discretionary demand patterns remaining strong should augur well for a 10 12% uh, top line growth of 14 15% earnings growth so clearly hold on to the stock all right hold on to asian paints a long term wealth compounder as mayuresh calls it but with that we'll take a short break come back and remember tomorrow is a thursday we have our mutual fund corner where top experts will answer all your mutual fund related queries you can email us all your queries we will focus on some more stocks when we return as of today
Hi, welcome back. It looks like uh, the market has taken a bit of um, seeing some uh, selling pressure on the frontline space, but it's the mid-cap index where there appears to be a bit of a casualty. So a uh, sharp now coming through actually in the last few minutes. Uh, some of the stocks that you want to look at, DLF for one, uh, so that stock is now down about uh, three odd percent. And um, other than that, uh, the other stocks not doing too well. So, uh, you know, the likes of Tata Global Beverages, so that's just down about a percent now. But the bigger casualties actually remain something like a CG Power or even a Concord. Um, as well as, uh, say, uh, LIC Housing Finance. So some of these stocks actually a bit on uh, the losing side. Mangalam, any more stocks? Well, Sumaira, I'm uh, looking at HCC. Remember, that stock is down about 6, 6.5%. There was a newspaper report that is telling, uh, uh, that was talking about how the company is mulling over an increase in payment for the management at a time when perhaps the stock is underperforming. So that is something we'll have to watch out for. Jubilant Food itself has come off, off uh, from the high point of the day. Some bit of profit taking cannot be ruled out, as you said earlier as well. Gen irrigation of the high point of the day. And we have KPIT Technologies too sitting lower from the high point of the day. So we will keep an eye out on individual stocks. The Nifty itself currently holding in the green with just about eight points. So good time to get in a query then. Manoj Nimawat writing to us from Gujarat holds 18 shares of BSC at 808 rupees a piece for the last one year. Long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Uh, Rajat, we usually ask you for stocks on BSC, but right now, what are the charts of BSC saying? I mean, after a considerable period of uh, downswing, it is now sort of consolidating. And I would suggest that since uh, hardly any uh, stock available uh, in that space and long-term prospects continue to remain good, uh, especially this consolidation that is currently on, uh, the stock should be held with a stop loss below 750 on closing price basis. And going forward, I expect uh, there could be good rise at least 10 to 15 percent over a period of next one year or so is likely on the uh, because of the consolidation. Actually we should look at uh, Voltas as well uh, and that's not the stock that's e <coughs> exerting pressure on the downside as well as Hexaware which has actually been hurting through uh, the morning and continues uh, to actually see some more pressure. Up next, our query comes in from Mr. Devin Shah, who's now on the line with us from Ahmedabad. Hi, Mr. Shah. How can we help you? Uh, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. Tell us. Can, uh, my query is regarding Delta Corp. I, I bought it about 170. Hmm. So what are the prospects of Delta Corp? Because it has corrected substantially. Okay. So you want to know whether you should remain invested or are you looking yeah. to actually uh, add on over here? No, whether remain invested and also add on, both. Okay. Um, uh, Mayuresh, your thoughts? So, Sumera, I think the numbers had been uh, pretty reasonable for Delta Corp. Uh, and going ahead, I think the new gaming policy is something that will define the trend. Now, going with the earlier uh, norms that had come through, you probably expected to see uh, a bit of a dichotomy, I think, the offshore and on-site casinos that you're probably talking about. Uh, and even if one assumes with the increase in uh, the license fees, a lot of the other operators uh, who are operating probably onshore uh, are going to feel the brunt. Uh, again, Delta will uh, feel the brunt for its uh, onshore operations as well. But I think the footfalls uh, for its biggest uh, uh, operating unit, that is Delta and Royale, should probably continue and that itself will lead to strong earnings growth and visibility. The second element in terms of the results profile itself, uh, both the casino gaming business and the online gaming business have actually done well. And even if you assume a bit of margins to contract a tad bit, 36, 37 odd percent, EPS probably to get reported around 9 odd rupees, there is still reasonable scope in my opinion even from the current levels. Uh, so I think the investor can clearly hold on to the stock as well. All right, let's do a quick break. Come back. There are lots more queries we'll answer on the other side. We'll also try and find out what's plaguing the BHEL stock uh, up next. But uh, also do remember that for tomorrow, send us any of your mutual fund-related questions that you have. We'll take it up on our special MF Corner uh, that's lined up for you at 2 p.m.
Welcome back here with your stocks. Let's focus on BHEL for the moment because its stock is almost 10% off of its high. Of course, its spike we saw once numbers came. And since then, the stock has continued attracting gravity. Anisha is here to tell us why. Anisha, at first glance, the numbers look good. Uh, what is it that's spooking investors? Well, what is spooking investors is the fact that the numbers are not very transparent. There's a bit of lack of clarity. We do not know whether there are any one-offs, etc. or not. And that's the reason perhaps the street is not willing to give the benefit of doubt to the company at all. Because do remember the positive in the numbers is that the gross margins have expanded to around 43% now. And last quarter as well, that was the biggest positive and we had seen quite a bit of positive reaction on the stock post that. Uh, but uh, the street is saying that they, maybe there are a bit of one-offs that is supporting the numbers because the top line yes is a bit of mix we, uh, miss we have seen just the power segment do well so the industry segment has actually declined i'll just read out what a few brokerages have to say quota for example says that it is just a sharply lower other expenses which is responsible for the entire beat on the margins and in their preliminary assessment the sharp decline may have been driven by non-predictable items such as forex gains and provision ridebacks and that is why they are awaiting the management commentary with uh, on the con call which will happen at 4 pm intake for example says the performance is strong and they would want to point out the fact that the gross margins have improved. Do you remember one important niggling worry is that if you look at the segments, uh, the capital employed has gone up and given the fact that it is not a very uh, asset heavy, heavy business, the expectation is that the receivables of the company have gone up. They were already escalated at around 36,000 level. Any increase in that would really be a negative. So if that is the uh, thing that comes out in the con call, that will be a bit of negative. All right, Anisha, thanks a lot for that. We will watch out for the details from the earnings call. Meanwhile, Gunjan Jain writes to us from Amravati, holds 153 shares of Hexaware at 230 rupees for the last one year and five months. A long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Making a bit of money, today is uh, the only perhaps one of the down days after a good set of numbers. Mayuresh, uh, should she ignore today's down move and continue to hold on? She's been making money for the last one year or she should perhaps sell in today's down day as well? No, so I think it really depends on uh, the viewpoint uh, that the investor holds Mangalam. So I think if it's a longish view, I think she can hold on. I think the kind of uh, commentary that the management probably gave out, both in terms of the dollar guidance at 12 to 13 percent, uh, and few of their business verticals, uh, which includes manufacturing, consumption, insurance, uh, accounting for 46 percent, holding out quite well. Uh, the only sore point probably was the flattish EBITDA margins that the company reported and the particular, I think, key client-specific issues. Uh, so I think that is what the street is probably a little bit plagued about uh, because the valuations of Hexaware, even at the current juncture, are no way cheap uh, compared to a lot of its peers. Uh, so again, I think a large element of uh, the viewpoint probably remains, but an alternate stock that I can also suggest to the industry, investor is KEI Industries. Uh, very strong order book at 2,570 crores. EPC stands at 1470-odd crores. What you've probably seen in terms of the EPC execution happening at a fast clip, the extra high voltage segment also contributing significantly better, would lead to EBITDA margin expansions of 10.5, 11-odd percent. Uh, you're probably talking about a 16, 17% top-line growth, a 19, 20% bottom-line growth. Uh, and again, I think the ROEs and earnings per share probably expanding in double digits over the next two years. So I think an alternate choice for the investor is KEI Industries on declines in a standard way. All right, uh, gentlemen, thanks very much uh, for joining in and for advising our viewers. Meanwhile, keep your eye on the market. It's slipping now, so the nifty is just about to turn into the red, uh, just about barely ho uh, holding on for the Sensex as well. The mid-cap index, too, would be close to the low point of trade. And a lot of these banking stocks, Axis, yes, both of them now trading in the red. But we have to wrap up on your stocks. Remember to keep sending us your queries, and we'll have our experts answer them for you. Do stay tuned. Closing bell will take you through the last hour of trading.